Welcome to California Now, a podcast produced by Visit California. I'm Satirius Johnson. Today, we're continuing our series on hidden gems within California's urban centers with How to Hack Orange County. We start with Giselle Anderson, who says the waters off Dana Point are world-class when it comes to spotting whales and dolphins. Dana Point has kind of made famous this dolphin stampede. People love seeing a dolphin stampede, and we see them here, I don't know, once or twice a week. To see a thousand or more dolphin is common. After that, Kurt Bjorkman tells us about a -a one-of-a-kind resort in Laguna Beach and a few other ways to take advantage of the region's perfect weather. You're just surrounded by this immense feeling of being outdoors in nature in this tucked away little place where you're really taken care of. Hidden Gem is a perfect way to describe it because you feel once you get here very peaceful and calm. And Orange Coast Magazine dining critic Gretchen Kurz tells us about her favorite restaurants in Anaheim and the greater OC. That's all coming up on California Now. If you've ever dreamed of getting out on a boat for an up-close view of marine life, everything from whales to dolphins to sea lions, my next guest has a few ideas right in Orange County. Giselle Anderson helps run Captain Dave's Dana Point Dolphin and Whale Watching Safari. She's also sometimes known as Mrs. Captain Dave, and she's here to tell us what makes the area so great for whale watchers. Welcome to California Now, Giselle. I am so happy to be here. Thank you. So, you know, when people say Dana Point is a great place to see dolphins and whales, that's not just talk. I mean, there are actual credentials backing it up, right? 100 percent, yes. In 2019, uh, we were privileged to be able to trademark Dana Point as the dolphin and whale watching capital of the world. And that didn't come easily. We had nine criteria. Went through that with flying colors, very excited. But our our next biggest thing was last year to be recognized by our peers. And by that, I mean uh, there is an organization called the World Cetacean Alliance, and they are the largest organization for the protection of dolphins and whales. And they have started a flagship type of program that gives the designation of a world whale heritage site to very special places. And it is a rigorous vetting process. And we became the first one in the Americas. And we were so excited because that gave so much credibility to what we've always been saying all along is that Dana Point is a really special place. So what exactly does it mean to be a whale heritage site? Here's the way I I like to explain it to folks. It's a place where when you step off the plane, this community lives, breathes, thinks, sleeps, cetaceans. So you walk into that area and you think, wow, these people really love dolphins and whales. And they <laughs> they celebrate them. They protect them. They protect their environment. They're responsible. So here in Dana Point, we have two whale watching operations. Both companies have been certified as responsible whale watching companies. And together, We work to create an environment here that will help protect these animals. So we have plastics cleanup, we have research, we we teach some of the, the local boating community how to respect and watch these animals carefully. Uh, there's just a lot of things that we do to educate folks. And it's not just the two whale watching companies, it's the whole community. So it's our county, it's our city, it's our even our, our, our stakeholders here. Um, it's our historical society. And it's a beautiful effort on the part of all of these folks who have worked you know, to, to make this environment here in Dana Point, not just a, an amazing place for people to come and experience them, because it is, but also an amazing place for these animals to come and, and live their lives. And that's just as equally important. And when you speak of cetaceans, just to be clear, you're talking about whales and other marine mammals, right? So there's, right. So so not all marine mammals are cetaceans. Um, dolphins and whales are cetaceans. Is there something unique about this part of the Pacific coast that makes it such a world-class destination? Uh, you know, like why why do whales live there? That's a great question, right? Not, not just why do tourists come, why do people come to visit, but why do the whales come? Yeah. And so that, that's such a great question. We have 10, 10 different species of dolphins and whales that are here throughout the year. 
10. And that's really incredible. We have five kinds of whales, five kinds of dolphins that share this home, this area here and call it home either all year or for a season. So um, it, a lot of it has to do with this deep coastal canyon that's right off of our harbor. It's kind of like the deep end of the pool mm -hmm. and it's right here. So you can jump right off uh, you know, the, the shore here and almost be in the deep end of the pool where the super cold water is and where there's cold water there's nutrient rich water and where there's that there's plankton and where there's plankton there's little fish and where there's little <laughs> fish there's big fish and <laughs> and there you have the animals and they come and they feed on the small fish they feed on the krill and so we get just some of the most outstanding populations of dolphin southern california has over 450,000 wild dolphin hmm. in one species alone. That's incredible. And Dana Point has kind of made famous this dolphin stampede. Um, people love seeing a dolphin stampede and we see them here, I don't know, once or twice a week. Oh, We're really blessed. And if folks want, they can go to our YouTube channel and they can see we've got over 30 million views because people love watching the dolphin stampede and some of the other amazing close encounters that we have with these animals. So um, it's just a tremendous experience to get out there. To see a thousand or more dolphin is common. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if I'm going on a, on a, uh, a safari with you to go see whales and dolphins, um, what else do I need to do before I, you know, head out on the trip? I'm thinking like, Maybe I should be dressed in layers or do I need sunscreen? <laughs> things like that. Yes, what are some practical yes. tips? All of those things. And we are blessed. It's Southern California. And that's one of the other things that makes us so special. But it can get cooler on the water. So we encourage people to um, always have layers and sunglasses and sunblock and a hat and um, always their phones. But we do encourage them to not be on their phones, to only use them as a camera. And just for, just for, two and a half hours, which is the typical length of our trip, disconnect from that and try to connect with what's around you. That's great. So, so in terms of the, of different kinds of whales, like what am I likely to see and, and how much does it vary, uh, you know, by the time of year? That's such a great question. Um, so in the winter months, we see the California gray whale migrating by. They make the longest migration down to uh, Baja and have their calves. So we're going to start seeing the calves coming back here um, by the beginning of April. And we'll see those mothers and calves all the way into May, occasionally June. And then the rest of the year, we have year-round um, fin whales, year-round minke whales and year-round humpback whales. And then in the summertime, just about the time that the gray whales are starting to leave the area, blue whales come and mm. blue whales. That's the biggest animal that's ever lived on the planet. And I have, I have to tell you, that Captain Dave says that, you know, there's nothing bigger than a blue whale, not Elvis, you know, not, <laughs> not a dinosaur. The only thing bigger than a blue whale is God. And you hear his name mentioned all the time because when a blue whale comes out of the water and exhales at 240 miles an hour, and that, that exhale goes 40 feet up in the air. And that whale just keeps cutting through the water because it's, you know, 90 to a hundred feet long. Everyone says, Oh, God. <laughs> it's just incredible. So so tell me about some specific experiences you've had. Is there like a, a holy grail sighting that you could tell us about? <laughs> I've probably got a holy grail for every single species. One that always comes to mind is when we first started seeing blue whales. They didn't come here very often. And um, blue whales, you don't tell them where to go. They go where they want to go. <laughs> and they decided to start migrating to Dana Point. This was in the early 2000s. And we got a call that there was a mother and a calf. And so I jumped on the next boat and we went out and they were still there. They hung out for days. And this calf... I was on our smaller boat, very low to the water, at our original boat. And you don't even need an underwater pod with that one because you're so close mm -hmm. to the water. And this baby blue whale came up. My feet were hanging off the side of the boat, almost touching the surface of the water. And this baby blue whale came up right next to me, maybe four or five feet away. 
And it was so curious because I think we were the first boat it had seen and it wanted to know, what is this? You know, I, I don't know. what. The, and the mother was kind of about a quarter mile off. She was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. You know, keep, keep the baby busy while I feed. <laughs> and, you know, she probably was diving and feeding and that baby was just not, you know, it didn't need to do that. It was still being nursed. So it was just kind of playing with us and it hung out with us for a good half hour. And it was incredible that that baby blue whale our boat that smaller boat was a 32 foot boat mm -hmm. that baby blue whale was probably 45 feet oh, amazing and uh yeah that was life-changing that's so, incredible that's one of my favorite experiences wow how about one more so during covid especially i would go out um by myself just to get away <laughs> and i was out there um this pod of common dolphin was out there and they saw me cruising along and they turn and they come. And it's, it's very humbling to think that these wild animals would want to come and play and be a part of your world for a little while. And they did. And then as I was zipping along with them and just we were just kind of playing in and out and they were crossing my bow and they were right on the side of me and they were jumping through the waves behind me and then they just decided to stampede and it's and they just slowly pick up speed so i'm picking up speed with them and we're just flying through the water together and they're loving it i'm loving it it's just it's it's unbelievable. And yeah. I love that we get to do that here uh, right off our coast. And I nothing gets me more excited than when someone comes in and experiences it for the first time. And they, they just can't believe it's right here. And and sometimes we have locals experience it for the first time. They're like, you live here. You got to get out there. <laughs> yeah, right. So we want to get the word out, right? Yeah, yeah. So Giselle, I'd really be remiss not to ask you about a few experiences that take place on land as well. Yes. I mean, because, you know, your guests have to go back on land at some point. So let's talk about some of the places you like to steer visiting friends, you know, whether it's like places to stay or things like that. Let's start with, with, with places to stay. So um, we have so many five-star properties here in Dana Point and Laguna Beach that it's difficult to choose, but I do have a couple of favorites. Um, Dana Point has got the Laguna Cliffs Marriott that's got a gorgeous view of the of the ocean and it's walking distance. So you can stay there and just, you know, walk to anywhere in the harbor. And we have one of the most amazing places to walk in the harbor. Um, my other favorite place to stay myself is in Laguna Beach and that's the Surf and Sand Resort. And I love the Surf and Sand. It's a smaller property and it's right on the ocean. So when you step out onto your balcony and you look down, it's right there. And you're looking <laughs> right at the right at the waves. That that all sounds really really great. So what what about food? Where do you steer people to get a you know a good meal? Do you have a favorite like coffee spot or cafe in the area? Yes, I do. So for coffee, if I just want like so I actually don't drink coffee, but <laughs> I love, <laughs> I love smoothies. I love organic smoothies and juices. And there's a great place in Dana Point Harbor, uh, coffee importers that has fresh smoothies and fresh juices and amazing blueberry bagels. And that's a great hot spot. If somebody wants to have more of a sit down and be served breakfast, Proud Mary's is my favorite place. And it's got gorgeous views and you can, the, the staff is Awesome. And what so do they what are, do they serve there for breakfast? What, what are some of their great of, things? All kinds of yummy things. I, my favorite is their veggie omelet with some of their great homemade salsa and guacamole. It's fantastic. That sounds really good. Uh, so, how about a place if you wanted to uh, send somebody for a nice meal, like say dinner? Right. So, I would have to say my two favorite spots are uh, the deck. In Laguna Beach, you know, you could go there at sunset and see this great um, sunset from there. <laughs> um, and if they were interested in coming inland, they could go over to the San Juan Capistrano Missions area and the Los Rios uh, district, which is this wonderful old historic district that is so fun to walk around in and do some great shopping. But across from the mission is a place called the Cedar Creek Inn. And they have got 
one of my favorite things in the world. It's called Marcy's salad and they also have fresh fish and um, yeah, yummy stuff. And they have the what's, beautiful outdoor eating patio. Yeah. What's Marcy's salad? <laughs> so I'm, pl- <laughs> I'm plant-based. And so Marcy's salad is this delicious concoction of all fresh greens, but chopped apples, chopped walnuts. Um, and I do mine with garbanzo beans. And then it's got kind of like a peanut and ranch blend dressing. Oh my gosh. And it's got, you know, chips, little tortilla chips on top. Ugh, I think I'm going to have to go now. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. And uh, so like if you have, uh, you know, some carnivorous friends or pescatarians. Yes. Um, you know, what are, what are. I would highly it? recommend, I would highly recommend that for them too. Um, for, for that. Um, there's another place in, that I love in Dana Point called the Salt Creek Inn. And they have got incredible steaks, ribs off the charts. And they have some really great um, plant-based and vegan offerings too. But they are delicious. And uh, we really love going there too. So um, let's say I'm in the market for one more experience with nature before I hit the road, maybe an easy hike or a spot with a nice view. Uh, What comes to mind? So there's a place here in Dana Point. It's called the Dana Point Headlands. And they think sometimes that the reason we have so many gray whales here in Dana Point is because of the headlands, that they use it as a navigational aid. It's hard to know, but it's stunning. And there is a walk all along the headlands, it's called Strands, and it goes all the way up to the foot of the Ritz-Carlton, and it's gorgeous. And so you, you're walking along the headlands, you have um, Salt Creek Beach, and then uh, the cliffs are behind you. It's really stunning, and um, I, I would highly recommend that. Uh, at the top of the headlands, there's also a nature center, and there's usually some docents there. There's great places you can walk up out on the top of the cliffs and watch for whales from there. Well, sounds really great. Giselle, this has really been wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us on California Now. Well, I hope that you come down and see us soon, and we will get you out there to have your own connection experience. Absolutely. Giselle Anderson helps run Captain Dave's Dana Point Dolphin and Whale Watching Safari. They're online at dolphinsafari.com, and their Instagram is a spectacular collection of up-close whale pictures at Capt Dave's Whale Watching. We'll be back with more ideas for how to hack Orange County in just a moment. This is California Now. If you're enjoying this episode, you really should check out the whole California Now podcast archive. This is our 70th episode, and over the years, I've had the good fortune to interview fascinating folks like travel and leisure editor-in-chief Jackie Gifford and Food Network star Troy Johnson. The best way to find these episodes and many more is to subscribe. You'll gain access to our entire back catalog so you can pick and choose the material that interests you the most. Plus, new episodes will be delivered straight to you as soon as they go live. Just go to your favorite podcast platform and subscribe to the California Now podcast. Thanks. From Disneyland to Michelin star dining to world-class shopping, Orange County has a lot to offer. My next guest tells us it also is an amazing place for a sustainable and picturesque getaway, whether that means being pampered in a spa, a relaxing round of golf, or just enjoying the crash of Pacific waves. You can do all that and more at the ranch at Laguna Beach, where Kurt Bjorkman is general manager. He's here to tell us about both the property and the surrounding area. Welcome to California Now, Kurt. Oh, thanks, Saturius. Glad to be here. So let's start with an overview of the ranch. What makes it special? Oh, man, so many things. Uh, It is one of these very unique places where uh, Laguna Beach has about seven miles of beaches. We're not a beachfront resort, though. We're a canyon resort. So we're tucked away only 300 yards from Aliso Beach, which is this massive, expansive beach. But we're inside this really amazing canyon where there's no homes around us. Uh, We're about 87 acres of just wilderness. Hmm. We have a nine hole golf course and then we've got our 97 guest rooms spread out campus style throughout the property. They sit on about five acres of the hotel and they're built out to luxury standards, a beautiful pool spa. It's just stunning. 
stunning. I, I saw photos of it online and it really looks very secluded and remote. So, I mean, would you kind of qualify this or characterize the ranch as kind of like as a hidden gem? Oh, absolutely. I love that word. I love that phrase, hidden gem, because uh, while we're busy, when you get here, you really feel like you've kind of left the hustle and bustle of Pacific Coast Highway and busy uh, Southern California. And you're uh, you're just surrounded by this immense feeling of being outdoors and nature in this tucked away little place where you're really taken care of. But yeah, Hidden Gym is a perfect way to describe it because you feel once you get here, very peaceful and calm. Hmm. If people want to experience the beach, what is that like? Is there like a trail that they take or how do, how do they get to the beach? So there's a little tunnel that goes underneath Pacific Coast Highway. <laughs> so you don't have to go, you don't have to play Frogger to get across to the beach. <laughs> right. And we'll take you in a golf cart or, or there's a little beach trail you can take right from your guest room. You walk over, it takes maybe eight minutes to walk mm-hmm. uh, all, all by yourself. And then once you get there, we operate a beach cafe at Aliso Beach. So in a way, we do have a beachfront resort if you consider that, the, you know, our food and beverage operation there. But we have a, a cafe called Lost Pier Cafe. Because there used to be a pier at the beach back hmm. in the 70s and 80s, and it was taken down in the late 80s. But uh, locals know it, so I thought it would be fun to name it something interesting. Uh, you know, people get there and ask questions like, "Where is the pier?" It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's lost, <laughs> and it, it's lost. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's like your classic California beach cafe, right on the sand, a patio, um, uh, takeout, walk up takeout service uh, in the morning. Uh, we serve beignets pastries, nice. breakfast burritos, breakfast sandwiches. And then lunch, we go into like lobster rolls, burgers, salads, poke bowls, of course. And and then we uh, also have fun because it's we are allowed to serve beer and wine on our patio. So you can sit on the on the beach watching the sun set over Catalina uh, with some uh, a great beverage, like a, a nice a nice glass of red wine or champagne or a nice uh, IPA. Oh, that sounds lovely. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. Do people um, hike around the property? Yeah, there's uh, there's incredible amount of hiking trails around our property. One, you can walk right from our property uh, to this trail called Valido. It starts with a, like V-A-L-I-D-O, Valido Hiking Trail. So you walk through this very historic street and you end up on the trailhead. It's it's about four miles round trip from our hotel. We'll also drive you to the trailhead, and it's like a, a mile and a half round trip. But um, it's a really steep trail, very short, but it gets you from about sea level to 650 feet above sea level in less than a mile and a half. And then you're standing up there, and you see all the way from you know a little north of Laguna Beach, all the way to, say, Rancho Palos Verdes, which is Los Angeles County. Mm-hmm. And then sa- south, you can see down to um, the next town, Dana Point. That sounds great. Uh, and I, I understand there's a farm on the property as well. What can, what can yep. you tell me about that? Yeah, so at the kind of the furthest inland part of our property, at the back end of the golf course, we have a half acre organic farm. It's actually a biodynamic farm. Uh, it's not certified organic. But it's biodynamic, so it's it's practically organic. We use the only soil amendments, which is like what you'd say fertilizer, mm-hmm. comes from our our kitchen. So we take all the food waste from our kitchen, goes to a compost system that we we use, and we turn that compost into soil, and that's what feeds the the dirt. And then we grow vegetables, herbs, and flowers seasonally there in uh, most of the bar, like the drinks at the bar. Any of the the shrubs or infusions we create are using herbs from the garden. Um, our hotel lobby centerpiece is flowers we grow at that garden. Um, and then, of course, you know we're going into kind of a lull time right now as it goes into spring and summer, where we'll see the bigger vegetables, above ground vegetables. But uh, we had a great winter with a bunch of um, like lettuces and then beets and tomatoes, uh, which were off the charts this year. That's really, that's really great that to be able to kind of, you know, bring the whole sustainable ethos to the restaurant at the, at the, yeah. you know, at the resort as well is really wonderful. And I, I, I know there's some, there are other examples. What are some other examples of, of, you know, how you guys make sustainability yeah. such a priority? One of the, the, th- the things I'm most passionate about sand we use sand in our golf course bunkers. We have 17 golf course bunkers and each golf course bunker has about uh, 30 tons of sand in it. Hmm. 
Now, sand, what I didn't know until uh, several years ago, sand, sand is a third most utilized resource in the world beyond water and air. Right. Amazing. Um, so if, if it, yeah, if you think about it, everything you, you use, glass, your phone, everything has sand in it. It's concrete, but it's also one of the most degraded, uh, misused resources. So it's, it, there's several different kinds of sand. The kind of sand you really need for like golf course bunkers is very rare and problematic. And so this company in New Zealand came up with a cool solution where we, we take every bottle that we use on property. So all the wine bottles, booze bottles, beer, and we take those and we crush them. And then we sift them through this cool sifting system uh, and turns it into bunker sand. So um, all, all of our, yeah, all of our bunkers uh, utilize mostly sand from our glass crushing system. We call it bottles to bunkers. And, um, <laughs> and it, you do that feels... all on the property. You do that right all... on site. Yep. We have two glass crushing machines and one big sifter. We haven't had to buy sand from outside the, the golf course for over two years. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's really impressive that, that you guys are able to create your own sand from the glass bottles <laughs> yeah. that you guys, that, that, are, that are being used at the, at the resort. Um, what's another example of, of, of your sustainability, you know, uh, practice? Well, I mentioned composting a few minutes ago out in our farm, but um, in the state of California right now, which is a great law, you're not allowed to throw food waste uh, into the garbage or even like the, the green bin. It has to go into a special composting bin. So it's created some, some extra work for a lot of people in California. So what we did is we gave any employee who wants to bring their compostable food waste from home to the hotel so we can use it in our farm composting program, <laughs> these containers. So I have about 25, actually now I think it's up to almost maybe 35 employees bringing trash from home to work. And, uh, and we put it out in our composting uh, system. And as people see it, they get more excited about it. People are like, some of our team members are a little competitive. And so they'll start, <laughs> uh, you know, how many did you bring today and how many, but, you know, so we're, instead of saying, leave your garbage at home, uh, we say, no, bring it, bring it to work. That's really amazing. Pretty cool. So let's turn now to the surrounding area in Orange County. Uh, it's an amazing place to get out on the water or, you know, enjoy some fresh air. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. take advantage of that on your days off? I do. Um, uh, so I live about five. I'm really fortunate to live about five miles from the hotel in the next town, Dana Point. Uh, my wife and I and my two boys who are 14 and 17, both going on 37, are, <laughs> um, are you know, they live kind of the, the classic quintessential outdoor kind of waterman lifestyle. And if uh, a waterman is somebody who embraces uh, all things ocean. So surfing, fishing, scuba diving, snorkeling, boating. And we, we do all of that. So we spend a lot of time in the water. Um, and then we also mountain bike a lot. So we hit the trails both locally and in our local mountains. We like hiking. Uh, we're within a short drive, a, a, like less than a half day's drive from some of the most epic mountaineering hiking spots in in what i think is a world in this, uh, the sierra nevadas the eastern sierra nevadas like mount whitney and mm -hmm. uh all you know those towns up there are just incredible we do that a lot and and just uh enjoy enjoy the place you know the place that we live you mentioned surfing uh are there any particular like surf shops the locals frequent yes for sure there's a lot of great surf shops down here but the fiberglass surfboard was invented here in in uh, Laguna slash Dana Point, kind of both towns, south just the South OC area, kind of teeming with surf history. That was done. That was done by a guy named Hobie Alter. So if you've ever heard of the Hobie Cat, that uh, he invented that. But he was the first guy. Him uh, and a guy named Dick Met started Hobie Surfboards. And so Hobie Retail uh, is in Laguna Beach. It's in Dana Point. Uh, really great surfing shops that where you can get all your gear and great stories. And one of the shops in Dana Point actually has a shaping bay where the shaper, his name's Gary Larson. He's a history teacher at the local schools, but then he <laughs> shapes boards on his time off. But Gary is in there. You can actually go in uh, and and grab a shaping tool and he'll guide you. So you can, you can actually shape your own board. So you get the big foam, the foam blank and start carving away. Uh, there, and there's another place um, that where you can really dive into the history of surfing. It's called the Surfing Heritage Museum, which is in San Clemente. 
not too far from Dana Point, kind of this big warehouse that has surfboards from, you know, from the days when surfing was redwood, uh, big redwood boards, hmm. uh, all the way up to current boards and everything in between. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of like Grand Central Station, Ground Zero for surfing in the in the history of surfing culture. Yeah, and it's great that you can kind of access it as a as a visitor. That you can actually kind of get you know mm-hmm. tangibly feel it and you know learn about it and actually make your own board. That's that's really something. Yeah, yeah, which is really fun. I can make my own board, but personally, I couldn't use it because I'm not a great surfer. I could look <laughs> like it. I'll look like an idiot. But my kids shred out there. Like uh, it's just they make it look so easy. That's 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 amazing. Well, I was going to say, you know, yeah. like, like let's say I'm not a surfer, which I'm not, um, <laughs> but, but I want to do something yeah. that lets me enjoy the water. Where would you steer me? Like, where's one or two activities that are relatively easy to try out while I'm there? Yeah. Um, well, Laguna, I mentioned earlier, has seven miles of beaches. Most of the beaches are these coves. So if you imagine these like, like 40 to 50 foot tall cliffs and the water comes into these little coves. And uh, all of Laguna is a marine sanctuary. So there's no fishing, no take of rocks or shells. Uh, It's actually on a, um, it's a federally protected national monument, all these rock outcroppings in this water area. So the kelp forests and the fish, the the marine life, there's um, sea lions are teeming in this area. So getting out on a kayak is super easy and unbelievably cool to be paddling around these, you know, on top of these kelp forests and then if you put a mask on, you can kind of lean down and stick your face down and look into the water and just, it's this whole nother world. That's really easy to do. We have great partners. There's a, there's a company in Laguna that we use a lot and uh, Billy Freed, he started it a long time ago. He's a local Laguna guy. Um, and it's called La Vida Laguna. So la, the life of Laguna. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they do kayak tours. They do bicycle tours around the um, city as well. And they take you kind of on a historic tour and, point out all these historic homes that are in the city uh, while riding around on a bike. But the kayaking is unbelievable. It's kind of, uh, it's what you, when you dream about what kayaking should be, it's exactly mm-hmm. that. It's right, exactly right. that. Yep. Amazing. What what other outdoor activities are big in the area? I mean, you mentioned my, mountain biking a little bit. Yeah. Can we get into that? Yep. I mean, what's it like yeah. to, to be mountain biking out there? There's a few areas in the country that can call themselves where mountain biking really got its birth. And Laguna Beach is actually one of them. Huh. A lot of people don't really know that. So there's a there's a guy uh, in town. His name is Hans Ray. You know, anyone who Google's his name instantly will be filled with amazing shots of him doing all these. Uh, he's this German guy lives uh, with his wife and kids here in town and does like these mountain bike tricks. So he's like hopping over people and doing you know balancing your bike on the top of a telephone pole that kind of stuff. Uh, he's really good at, but he's a local legend and, and, and worldwide known. Uh, and there's another um, famous mountain biker named Brian Lopes. So Brian Lopes is uh, like a six time world champion downhill mountain bike racer in the mountain bike hall of fame. Uh, but there's, there's uh, about 27,000 acres of protected open space filled with trails for hikers and mountain bikers. Once you get into these trail systems, it's just amazing from uh, extremely, you know, kind of gnarly trails that are only good for expert mountain bikers, you know, doing the full gear and the full face helmets to just a mountain biker wants to get out and not really experience any climbing or downhill craziness. Those trails exist as well. And, right. and they're all within this kind of this area of Laguna that's easily accessible. There's a local bike shop called Laguna Cyclery that rents mountain bikes, takes people out of mountain bike tours. Uh, so it's it's a big culture here. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's like, I mean, it's like, you know, when you think of Orange County, you think of the beach, you think of the water, you think of other things, you don't think of mountain biking. So it's kind of yeah. surprising to to know that there is such <laughs> a long history and culture of it there. Yeah, it's 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 really fun. My I'm very much a part of that culture and my boys are too. So we'll we'll hit the trails here a lot almost weekly and then also go up into the mountains, you know, and there's yeah. some great trail systems up there well, as well. Yeah. I was going to ask you, are there any particular trails or parks that people really need to check out? There's two main parks in Laguna that are filled with the crazy trails, but they're interconnected. So there's one called Aliso and Woods Canyon. And that's is a, about a 13 and a half thousand acre protected land area with some great trails. And this is where probably the, the more 
chill mountain biking is uh, located. There's some great trails where you barely go uphill at all, but you're on these great wo uh, wooded canyon areas um, and there's streams nearby uh, and you can just enjoy your day. Uh, and that's that's very adjacent to where our, our resort is located. And then the other one is called Laguna Coast Wilderness Park, which is just north of us. And that's another 17,000 acres of wilderness area that kind of goes all the way up to Newport Beach and just all these massive, beautiful trails. Some some of the more popular trails and you've got like Lizard, which was purpose built for mountain biking. Uh, and then you've got other trails that are a little more purpose built for hiking. And um, we have a lot of fun out there, but it's pretty amazing because you can be what you feel like tucked away in this canyon. And then in five minutes, you, after a short climb on a beautiful hill, you're 800 feet above the uh, ocean again looking out over the world. Well, Kurt, this has really been great. Thank you so much for joining us on California Now. Thanks for having me. Kurt Bjorkman is general manager of The Ranch at Laguna Beach, online at theranchlb.com. As always, we'll have links to all the places we talked about on today's episode and lots more on our website, visitcalifornia.com slash podcast. This is California Now. My next guest lives and dines by the motto, Eat, Write, Repeat. Gretchen Kurz is the longtime dining critic at Orange Coast Magazine and is a leading authority for culinary recommendations around Orange County. She's penned hundreds of reviews over the years and is here to tell us about places you might not have heard about yet, but really should check out in and around Anaheim and the OC. Welcome to California Now, Gretchen. Thank you very much. So, so let's establish your street cred here for a yeah. second. You've been writing about food for Orange Coast for more than a decade, but it's hard for to, it's hard for anyone to find your picture online. Why is that? The reason for that is I can't have my face out there because I do my work anonymously. It's super old school. In the old <laughs> days, that's the only way it was done. Now, now it's like never done. So the world has changed, but I haven't. <laughs> I'm still doing it the old expensive laborious way and no one knows who I am. And I like it that way because if they don't know who I am, they're not paying for me. They can't treat me special. I get the real right. experience. So no, they make your reviews that much more authentic. I mean, right. They, pre I think readers appreciate that. Absolutely. So, you know, so broadly speaking, how has the restaurant scene evolved since you started covering it? As this county has grown, our cuisine has expanded in terms of options. And then, of course, you know, different ethnicities bring their food in. And it's, it's definitely deeper and it is wider. But at the same time, the old Orange Countyans, like my, me, people that have been here forever, they tend to be very timid uh, dining wise. They're a little they're a little fraidy cats sometimes. You know, they see mm -hmm. an ingredient in a, in a recipe or mentioned on a menu and that could scare them off. I think it took them forever to understand octopus, you know, so. So that's kind of exciting to me because I, I'll eat anything. So I, I'm, I'm welcome that. I mean, I, I have my favorite foods, but I mean, I like, I'm excited about a menu that I don't understand. Most people aren't, but I love it because that means I'm going to have something I haven't already had a million times. Well, you know, I, I'd like to kind of open up our listeners' horizons, uh, you know, in the culinary sense. Um, so let's jump into the food. I mean, assume like I'm an adventurous omnivore and I'm looking for a nice meal, say, in Anaheim. Where would you send me? Well, I would think this is, I never recommend hotel restaurants, but I do like the fact that at the, I believe it's the Radisson Blue on the top floor. It's, so it's a lovely view restaurant as well. It's mm. a Basque cuisine which is very rare. I mean, most people in Orange County don't even understand that early in Orange County, there were a lot of Basque people here, but it's not a cuisine. The cuisine they were enjoying is had nothing to do with what people enjoy in the Basque region now. Now it's all Michelin stuff in the Basque region. I think they have mm. the highest concentration of five or three-star Michelin restaurants in the Basque region. Here we just have the one, the new place that it's new at the Radisson Blue Hotel and it's called Blue Sky Bar. And it's, a beautiful setting, but the but the menu is interesting. It really kind of focused on Basque cuisine. A lot of Iberico pork, salt cod, uh, some of the hams and sausages that are are typical of the Basque region. A um, little little kind of bleeds into Spanish cuisine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, so the paellas, things like that. Right, right. Are there any must-have dishes like, if I go there? I had a foie, a foie dish. It was an appetizer and it was delicious and I hadn't had it in a long time. But I did enjoy my, um, I would say the duck. He, he, that chef, 
has a way, his name is Edgar Bias, B-E-A-S. He has a way with, a magic way with duck. I, I always enjoyed, enjoyed his duck dishes. And they, of course, the pork, they spell, the, they, they buy and sell the very expensive, rare, esoteric parts of the pork from esoteric places. And then basically it's so beautiful that all I have to do is not mess it up. And it's going to taste beautiful, but it's mm. very rich and concentrated and expensive. So that sounds like a really great place. You get not only amazing food, but you also have a great view as well, which is wonderful. Yeah, you're on the 12th floor. And I would say half the restaurant is outdoors because we have this gorgeous weather. There's no reason not to have this sprawling rooftop patio with a, a, a very comfortable lounge furniture. I mean, it's it's pretty nice. It has a beautiful view of the sunset. It's quite a sight. And actually, you can see the Matterhorn in the distance. Because oh, it's you're not kidding. that far from Disney. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's really great. Okay, so let's say I'm staying another night in Anaheim. Again, I'm looking to have a memorable culinary experience somewhere a little under the radar. Um, where else comes to mind? Um, a, a newer place that I really enjoy, it's called Poppy and Seed, and it's near the Anaheim Packing House, and it's a freestanding restaurant. So the Anaheim Packing House is a lot like a food, food hall, but this is aside from that. It's its own freestanding restaurant. Beautiful setting. It's a lot of outdoors, gorgeous patio, and they grow a lot. Uh, they grow as much food as they can find room to grow it. And it's a husband and wife team, and they are out of Los Angeles, which it doesn't happen all that often in Orange County. You'd think it would happen often. It does not. And What kind of cuisine do they serve? I would say New American. They do a nice job with it. They're kind of specialized in the beginning in downtown LA. They, serve, they have a very popular brunch restaurant there still. So brunch is a strong game for them here, but they, here they serve lunch and dinner, which they do not serve in Los Angeles. So they, they have devoted a lot more energy and creativity to this particular restaurant. So it's very seasonal. So I would say that revenue changes like about every, I want to say a lot when I was reviewing it every week I went and it was different. So <laughs> So that's great. So they they can, they stay on top of like the very seasonal stuff, either that they're growing or they're getting from nearby. Right. So the chef is very intentional about the seasons. And so he'll just change things up. Even if he's serving some kind of meatballs or something, he might change the sauce on it from a yogurt mint sauce to a, to a tomato heavy sauce or just, you know, it's, it's always changing. So that's kind of nice. But also means that you can't fall in love with a dish and expect to have it a month later. Right. I was going to ask you, like, what, 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 what should I look for on the menu? But it sounds like I, I really, you can't really recommend anything because it changes so often. So how about, how about, how, what, what's a memorable dish that you had there, uh, you know, recently? Uh, I had a tartine. Um, that sounds like a brunch dish, but I think it was a lunch. I was there for lunch and it was our tar- tartine last summer with peaches. And it was a very peachy um, and fresh cheese and peaches and little flowers on it. And it was a really beautiful sourdough toast. Yes. So that's one of the dishes I really like. And he also is a a master of duck, which it's not that I'm a freak for duck. It's just that it so happens that he does a good job with it and his poultry as well. And that fried chicken, they do a mean fried chicken. So that's kind of the stuff you could reliably have because it kind of leans toward the brunch and that doesn't Mm -hmm. really change a lot. So it's at dinner time that the meals are quite different. They import some really great beef out of Texas for their tomahawk steaks or their hanger steaks, and they have really high quality beef. And then of course the vegetables change all the time. So right now I, yeah, I would expect to be able to get stuff with English peas and ramps and spring garlic. That'll be on the menu, but it will be on the menu for you know three weeks and then it'll right, disappear right. now. Yeah. But it sounds like uh, pretty much anything you order is gonna be pretty amazing. Yes, he's a great chef and uh, the cocktails also are pretty elevated and of course full of herbs. Like they, ha- they have a private gardener who all she does is grow the items that he wants to see in his uh on his plates in his food and in the drinks so it's a fun job for her and they're thrilled to have all the fresh you know access to fresh organic food that sounds really great now now i understand that you don't give out four star reviews lightly but there's a place on the border between anaheim and garden grove um that you've written about what what can you tell me about it nova um it's huge it's fabulous they have different rooms different themes it's very asian um, this is the fire room, and this is the wind room. This is the water hmm. room. So they have features for each thing, and it's very large and kind of kind of Vegas glamorous. And then, of course, the patio is a little more humble but really comfortable. It's fabulous food. The chef's very invested in the, the sushi particularly, but it's not a sushi restaurant. So there is fabulous sushi on the menu, but that's not why you're there. 
that's kind of the way maybe you'll open a meal or maybe you have it with a fabulous cocktail, but um, they do have a full menu of other items. And I've really liked um, cured pork loin with cumin crusting and just interesting. And they brought it to, and it was a kind of a make it yourself. They, it was so loaded with accoutrements that you kind of built your own meal. They brought you this <laughs> big platter. Here's this beautiful piece of meat and then all these lovely vegetables. And then you just kind of took it from there. But the service was so anticipatory. They just, they did everything right. And they, you know, of course, they have no idea who I am. So every time I went back, I had the same experience. That's kind of rare. Is that what set it apart for you as a four-star restaurant? Was it the service? Was it the the menu, the cuisine? It all, it all came together? Yeah, it all, that's how I see it. Food, mood, and um, service. That's all. They have to up, have score high in all, all the categories. And that's tough. That's really tough to do in a restaurant. But the ones that do it and then do it consistently, they are, that's magic in my book. Yeah. Well, those are great recommendations, I must say. Um, but of course, you know, Orange County is a is a huge place. Uh, but, so let's radiate out a little bit and maybe go someplace with a view. Uh, where do you recommend? I really, I am in love with a place in, um, and I have been for a long time since it opened, in uh, Huntington Beach. Gorgeous view on the second floor of a huge uh shopping a new shopping center called Pacific City I would say it's about three years old so behind a very huge restaurant in there called Blue Gold it looks as a giant beautiful tourist restaurant with something to please everyone menu and then hidden in there is a little like a 28 seat speakeasy <laughs> with super authentic Vietnamese cuisine mm. and it's dark and it's tiny and it's hidden and so that's adds a lot of allure to it but the more importantly, the food, the drinks, the service, and the wine are awesome. So that works for me. And he's a great chef. His name is um, Tim Vaughn. Uh, he has another couple of restaurants. He also, that, so that restaurant I'm describing, it's called LS, LSXO, which stands for Little Sister Extraordinary. <laughs> and that is because he had ex- existing restaurants in Los Angeles called Little Sister, which were very wonderful Japanese restaurants kind of with they were similar to each other a similar mood they were they were really nice they did very they do very well and so he wanted to open something that was different and so he liked the fact that it would be hidden and tiny it wasn't going to be this high volume situations right right yeah I have to say I've really come to appreciate Vietnamese uh cuisine since uh coming here to california it's just uh, such a wonderful yes it uh, is delicate kind of flavors it's wonderful yeah and he's a great chef and his food is a, a, he's a, he knows how to make the food consistently too which is such a challenge when a chef finds his audience and finds his his space his food his cuisine to be able to reproduce that on a larger scale it's that's tough and so i was really proud of him when he opened a new place in um, orange county in irvine at, at the, the really glossy Irvine Spectrum, which is a giant retail theme park, I call it. It fits right in. It, it seats, he went from 28 seats. This place seats like 210. Wow. Now, people new to the area might not realize that within Orange County, next door to Anaheim, there is the city of Orange. Um, what's one or two hidden gems there? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. But I happen to like, um, there's a new restaurant there called Boss Cat Kitchen. And they, they kind of specialize in Southern cuisine. So they do a great fried chicken, they have a great killer bourbon selection, beignets for dessert, that kind of thing, a crazy brunch, I would say a booze-fueled brunch, which I'm convinced brunch is for daytime drinking. Right. That's really the only reason brunch right. exists. So. Right. Oh, that's and funny. then also in orange, um, Santos Remedios is a brand new Mexican place on Catella Avenue. That's uh, that's not right in the heart of Orange, but it's very nearby. And that's a new Mexican place. It's very colorful and and uh, very Day of the Dead interior. So it's mm. it's fun and colorful, and they have live music on the weekends. And so that's that, that's kind of unusual for Orange County to have live music. Period. That's that's not very common. Yeah, and so uh, I'm like, what what would I want to order off the menu there? I would say that their tacos are excellent. They do these extra large tacos and they do the the steamed tacos as well. So they're not, the, they also do the little teeny tiny ones that they serve, let's say on um, Taco Tuesday. You have to, that's the law here. Uh, <laughs> you, have, you have your tacos and those tend to be the little teeny tiny ones, the little street tacos, the ones that you might get off a truck that are 
miniature tacos. But the, the, the ones at Santos Remedios tend to be the grander, larger, more ambitious tacos, mm-hmm. some uh, knife and fork tacos sometimes. So that's that's what I think what they're they're getting good at. They're they're pretty new. They've been open for about three months. So that's in my world, that's very new. Well, Gretchen, this has been really great. Thank you so much for joining us on California Now. Oh, this was a lot of fun. Now I'm hungry. And me too. Okay, good. <laughs> Gretchen Kurz is the longtime dining critic for Orange Coast Magazine, online at orangecoast.com. This is California Now. Thank you for listening to California Now. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we hope to see you in the Golden State soon. This podcast is produced by Visit California. I'm your host, Satirius Johnson. You can find our show on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're in trip planning mode, be sure to check out the California Now blog. It's the perfect companion to the conversations you just heard on this podcast. You'll find timely and topical trend stories, the latest information on local events like Coachella, theme park updates, and much more. It's all at visitcalifornia.com slash now. That's visitcalifornia.com slash now.